guys, what's up? Got another video for you today. I'm going to be showing you how to make some crazy looking thumbnails for your YouTube videos. A lot of people don't really uh, make tutorials on it. There's a handful of them out there, but I figured I'd go ahead and make one to show you guys what's going on. Uh, so right here, guys, I have the screen recording going on for you so you can kind of see uh, what's going on. So I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop CC. It's going to be 2018. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. Um, again, guys, this is what I'm using, so hopefully it's what you guys have. It'll be a lot easier to follow along if this is the program you're using. So we're going to go ahead and open up Adobe Photoshop. We're going to create a new um, project here. Um, I have mine set up custom for about the right size of YouTube's thumbnails. And what that is is right here, you can just pretty much look right here on the screen over where the mouse is and pretty much copy my settings right here into your custom set up in Photoshop and that should be pretty much exactly what you need uh, for your thumbnail. So we're going to go ahead and create that to get it started. As you see we have a blank page here, or sorry a blank um, layer here. Um, so to start guys let's go ahead and drag in the photo we want to use for our thumbnail. So let's go to my downloads, we're just going to find something to use for a thumbnail. I have all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, let's go ahead and just, we'll go ahead and use this picture, me with my CBR. This is what we're going to do. So we're going to pull this guy in here, drop him there. Uh, as you can see, this doesn't really match up with the dimensions of this. So it's going to, this is going to make it look a little weird for a second. But we're going to go ahead and as you can see, I'm just pretty much grabbing the corners up here and dragging it and just resizing it the way I would like so it fits this entire box. Um, guys, you can do whatever you want, but obviously the more you stretch it and move it, the more it distorts the picture and makes it look weird. So maybe just chill out a little bit on that. So anyway, I think it looks good right about here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and press enter. It's going to place our picture right there. All right, so now we have our first layer, as you can see down here on the right side, if you're following me. First layer is the background, and then we have our second layer, which is our main photo. If you double click the title here, you can rename it. I always like to rename it main, so I just know that that's the main photo we're working on. So guys, my style of editing my thumbnails, let's go over here on the left side, you have all kinds of tools in Photoshop. To be honest, I don't even know how to use half of them. Um, but my favorite tool definitely for thumbnails is the pen tool. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to use it. It's this guy right here. We're gonna click that and we're gonna go ahead and zoom in. I'm using the trackpad on my MacBook Pro, so I'm just zooming in uh, on the picture. I think you can also go to up here somewhere in the, I don't know, view. there's somewhere that you can also zoom in if you guys don't have a trackpad to zoom in on. But anyway, we're gonna zoom in and basically the process we're doing here guys is we're going to trace out with the pen, me on my bike for the for um, another layer. So as you can see, I'm just gonna click right here and pretty much, it does not have to be perfect, obviously guys, I'll show you later what we're gonna be doing, but just trace out whatever the subject is for your thumbnail as best as you can. What I like to do is stay slightly inside. Um, we're gonna undo that. I messed up there. Sorry, I'm going to stay on the inside slightly of the subject. So when I blur the background, which you guys will see, it's just going to kind of blend in a lot better, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain here. So we're just going to follow this all the way around with the pen tool. There's other ways to use this pen tool where you can actually go around round objects. I just don't like going through the hassle of bending it and making it round. I just click around it. So we're just going to kind of, like I said, keep following this around. Honestly, guys, this is the most tedious part, if I'm going to be real with you. It takes, it takes a minute. Um, but it definitely, after you're done with the process, it is it does look pretty good when you're done with it. All right, so let's keep following this around. We're about halfway, halfway around here. Um, but yeah, guys, I've only been doing my own custom thumbnails for a short amount of time, so I figured I might as well make another how-to video because I know you guys kind of like getting an idea of what I do personally and how I make things look the way they do on the channel. Go up here, go around my backpack here. Uh, get up here, trace, 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 trace. And again, guys, keep in mind, it does not have to be perfect at all. You just do the best you can tracing it. You'll see what I mean once we get to the point of us actually um, getting into the layers of this and stuff like that. It does not have to be perfect. Just do the best you can tracing around, again, whatever the main subject is of your thumbnail. As you can see, I'm kind of like cutting some corners here and there um, with the bike here or me and my gear, and it's not the end of the world. Especially when we're talking a thumbnail, the size that it is on YouTube, it's really small. 
So we're going to continue to trace around this guy here. Boom, bang, boom, bang. We're almost there. Like I said, to be honest, this is the most tedious part of creating the thumbnail. I really enjoy creating thumbnails, but honestly, a lot of times when it comes down to penning out, whatever it is, I have to pen out and create other layers. I don't really prefer doing this, but it comes with it. You got to do what you got to do. It's really not that bad. It just takes a little bit of time and patience here. All right, so we're coming up to the end of it here. Followed around, followed around. Okay, and now when we're coming around, you'll see we have these two left here. If you click the first anchor point we started, it's now going to connect this whole thing and make it one big circle of our layer. We're going to go up here where it says selection and click selection. This is going to pop up. Don't even mess with that. Just click OK. As you can see now, we have this outline around the layer. So now what we're going to do, since we have the main layer highlighted over here, we're going to click Command and J. And now you can see what that did over here is it created another layer in itself. So now we have the main background that I've dropped in. And then we have the layer we created me on my bike. So as you can see, if I remove this background, let's zoom out real quick. It's just me on my bike. Kind of cool. Um, so yeah, so basically we have a couple layers. Again, I'm going to rename this bike so I can keep track. Um, so now what we're going to do, guys, to make this look cool, let's go back over to our tools and just go back to this. This is just the move tool. It's kind of the safe tool. It doesn't do anything. You just click around, whatever. I just want to get rid of the pen because we're not using it anymore. Um, so what we're going to do, though, guys, is since we have my layer separated, we're going to go to the main background. We're going to go up top here to filter. And the filter I like to use is under blur, and it's Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur, I don't know how to say it, but this is my favorite one. So we click that, and this is going to be your scale. Just pretty much drag with how blurry you want it. That's a super blurry background. Basically no background, honestly. Or where I like to keep it is, again, here zero. I like to keep it somewhere you know, somewhere in there, two to three and two to four. So you can still see the background, but it helps the main layer, or sorry, the main subject pop a little bit. So that's the background there. We have it a little bit blurred. And now what we're also going to do is you can bring up curves and mess with the colors um, on the pictures. There's multiple ways you can do it. You can click image up here and go to adjustments. You have brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance, hue and saturation, all that stuff. But guys, a lot of times it's easier to just Highlight the layer, you wanna change the color. In this case, I wanna change, I wanna darken the background color so me on my bike stand out a little bit better. So we're gonna press Command M. It's gonna bring up this curves window. And you can see as I mess with the curves a little bit, if I bring it down, it darkens it like crazy. If I bring it up, it's gonna make it super bright. Right in the middle is neutral. So what we wanna do, at least, again guys, this is my style of doing it. We're gonna darken the background a little bit. So you can see I kinda stand out a little bit more. So we're gonna do it right about there. Now we're gonna go do the same thing with me. We're gonna highlight the layer of my bike down here in the corner, Command M, it's gonna bring the curves up. We're gonna actually brighten my layer on the bike. As you can see, I'm, I'm quite a bit brighter. You can see the difference, let's save it. That's what it was, that's what it is now. You can see the difference. Stands out a little bit more. And one of the final touches I like to do as well, we're gonna to go to filter, and this is gonna be, again, on the main subject, me on the bike. We have it highlighted over here. We're gonna go to sharpen and click sharpen more. You can see it sharpens it a little. It looks like it's a lot, but honestly, when you zoom out and have it as a thumbnail on YouTube, um, it just looks a lot more crisp. In my opinion, you can do whatever you want. That actually looks a little too sharp for me, but um, yeah, let's do this. Instead of sharpen more, let's just do sharpen. There, it's just slightly sharpen. I like how that looks better on this one. So we're gonna stick with that. Um, and then one of my favorite things, guys, to finish up, whatever some of the main subjects are, is we're gonna double click that layer. Down here, we have an outer glow option in this window. If you click that, it kind of outlines um, your layer there, but the size is too big. If you go to this size bar here, I prefer to have just kind of a small line around. So maybe like anywhere between a three and a five or a three and a six is where I like it. Sometimes more, it really depends. Um, now guys, here's what we're gonna do. Inside of my layer, you can see this is not really blurred out because that was all a part of the main layer here. So this background's all blurred out, and then the background here is not. That's something that bothers me just a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go over to the left side, go to the blur tool, and we are gonna make sure we're on the correct layer, which is the bike, perfect. We are going to blur out the background here. So again, it doesn't, sometimes that can look funky if you don't fix that type of stuff. At least it does to me, it really stands out. So we're gonna make sure this is all blurred out as best as we can do. 
Blur that, blur that, blur that out. Cool, so there's that. We've got one more spot right here. Make sure that's all blurred out. Cool, cool. Um, see if there's anything else. I think there's one more spot between my arms here. You can hardly even tell, but we're gonna blur that out too. Okay, so that's all blurred. Um, another thing we could go ahead and do, I'm not gonna get into it, but sometimes if you mess with the background color and lower it, like I said, and you have some of the background still a part of this layer sticking out, what you can actually do is go to the eyedropper tool and you can match up this color right here and go and paint it in here so it matches the background perfectly. I know that sounds kind of confusing. We're not even gonna get into that because there's really no need to do that to be totally honest with you guys. I don't really see the need to do it. So, so far this is what we have, a sharpened layer of me on my bike. We outlined it, we have it with the glowing out, the outer glow, it makes it kind of pop a little bit. We brought my brightness up, we brought the background brightness down. Now what we're gonna do is add a text to um, kind of grab your audience attention, whoever sees the thumbnail on YouTube. So we're gonna go over here and go to the type tool. You click anywhere here. Let's make sure my colors are right. Change this one, red. We're gonna go here and, I don't like that color. Sorry guys, let's make sure this color is good. Go down to red. Red. Sorry, that wasn't important really what I just did. That was just me setting the color up. Um, I prefer red on my thumbnails for typing. So let's just say this was a wheelie video. What I would probably type out is something like how to wheelie. Let's drag this over here with the, there, the move tool. How to wheelie, okay? So actually I'm probably gonna add an exclamation point as well. So there's our text right there. We're gonna just pretty much leave that there. Um, now again guys, if you double click on the text over here in the layers and click outer glow, you're gonna get an outer glow around your words as well and you can change the size. Um, I like to have it about that big for my text so they really pop. Now you can see we have the caption on the screen as well. Um, so guys, for the text, sorry if I'm going too fast. We're gonna highlight it here and go up to edit, go down to transform. You have a few options here. You'll, Sorry, I can't talk straight. You have a few options here. You have the scale button, which is pretty much just changing exactly what I just said, scaling the size of it. And you also have the rotate, which is clearly gonna rotate. So what I like to do is slightly like rotate the text. Normally not too much, but maybe something kind of like that, just whatever you like. We're gonna click enter. That looks about the right size as well. We could scale it and make it bigger. Um, I don't really care to do that, so we're gonna leave it like that. And now a lot of times what I like to do as well is add one more layer to kind of make this look cool. Normally mine have emojis on it, so we'll go ahead and click this out of my downloads, drag this. As you can see, I added another layer. Um, let's go ahead and rename this like I normally do with my stuff to keep track, emoji. Now since the emoji tab down here is highlighted right there, we can go to edit, go to transform, go to scale, and make this about the size we want it. So we'll maybe do something like that. Now keep in mind guys, on YouTube, your thumbnails, I can put a picture up for you real quick. Down at the bottom, they have a timestamp here. So when you're making your thumbnails, you want to make sure for the most part to not have anything important down here. So you don't want it to say how to wheelie across the bottom and have the word wheelie cut off by a timestamp on your video. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and double click the emoji again like we did with the rest of the stuff. Choose outer glow. And that's about how I like it right there. So we're gonna go ahead and have it sitting like that. And honestly guys, that's pretty much it. As you can see, that's a pretty solid thumbnail for a video. I think it looks pretty cool. All we did is mess with the sharpness, the color, put a nice text on there with an overlay, an emoji, whatever you really wanna do. Um, there's so much more you can do in Photoshop. I haven't really gotten into it to be totally honest. I'm still learning it all for myself, but I'm having fun with it. So I'm just hoping that maybe this video could help you guys a little bit if you're trying to kind of get into this and start creating your own thumbnails. Um, again, if I went too fast, I apologize. This was my first time teaching Photoshop in any way. Um, but this is just how I make my thumbnails, guys. So hopefully it helped you out at all. But to finish it up, if you're done with your thumbnail, you're gonna go to File, go to Export, Export As. And then we're going to pretty much make sure everything's good, but everything should already be set up exactly how you need it. There's your thumbnail, Export All. It's gonna want you to name it. I'm just gonna name it Wheelie thumbnail or whatever you want to name it. I haven't saved on my desktop. So we're going to export it. We're going to go ahead and minimize this. Double click. There's the thumbnail right there, guys. Looks pretty solid, pretty clean, stands out. 
And I can make another video in the future on how to upload custom thumbnails to YouTube. If you guys want me to, just let me know in the comments. So anyway, guys, as you can see on my desktop, I've been working on thumbnails like crazy. I've been trying to catch up on old videos and revamp the thumbnails. But yeah, guys, I hope that video helped at all. Again, any questions, put them in the comments below. Hopefully I can answer them for you. I'm still new to this Photoshop stuff too. But um, that's how it's done, guys. That's how I do it. Hopefully you guys can go and make your own crazy looking thumbnails as well. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for anything new coming up. I'm trying to get some more giveaways going on and just some other cool stuff, guys, in the future. I'm trying to keep it fresh. Um, but anyway, guys, make sure also like it to show your support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Better recognize a king when he rapping with you. You hold suck, it's like you always bring a vacuum with you. Silent like a mannequin, but you ain't plastic, is you? Because if you got a bone to pick, I got a matching issue. Talking about me, then it gotta be lost.